hello guys welcome back to my channel today we're going to be looking at the total surface area of a cuboid but we're going to start by looking at the two-dimensional figure from which a cuboid is produced a cuboid is a projection of a rectangle which is a two-dimensional figure and we know the properties of a rectangle we know that the opposite sides are equal and the sides meet at, meet at right angle so let us see how we produce this cuboid now so if you look on the right you realize that the, tr the rectangles are actually stacking up so in order to form a cuboid we actually just have a stock pile of rectangles just look at it go All right and if we compress this we're going to realize that it actually goes back to being a rectangle look at the figure going down there so by projecting the two-dimensional figure which is a rectangle we actually produce a cuboid we'll look at it one more time there we go all right and if we compress the figure it goes back to being a rectangle now what is unique about a cuboid is that we can look at the cross section from various direction because from whichever direction we look at, at it it has a uniform cross section if we look from top to bottom the cross section is uniform if we look from left to right the cross section is uniform and if we look from front to back we also have a uniform cross section so whichever way you cut this figure it has a uniform cross section we're now going to rotate this figure the cuboid and examine the different faces so let us go well, what we have done is that we have placed the opposite faces in the same color so it's easier to examine and look at now look at the opposite faces if you notice that the opposite faces actually have the same dimensions all right let us look at the top and the bottom now here we go so we have a rectangle at, rectangle at the bottom there and if we go back up to the top we notice that we have the rectangle of the same dimension in fact looking at it from the top view you realize it seems as if the top face is compressed onto the bottom face similarly if we look at it from this angle you notice it seems that the front face is compressed onto the back so technically speaking the opposite faces have the same dimension all right so we look at it from the front you won't be able to see the back because they have the same dimension as you can see there so let us rotate it and you look at it again so the opposite faces have the same dimension they have the same area now we can determine the total surface area of this cuboid by looking at the net of the cuboid so let's go right ahead let us unveil the cuboid there we go so the net is made up totally of rectangles as you can see and what we actually have is that the rectangles that have the same area we have them in the same color all right and bear in mind that opposite faces were equal so here light blue light blue this would have been the top and this would have been the bottom all right looking at that this would have been the left side and this would have been the right side and this would have been the front and this would have been but the back so what you're going to do now is to simply put in the dimensions so we can determine what the total surface area of the cuboid is now we're going to look at the total surface area by starting to look at the light blue section bear in mind that there are two faces that have equal area this face and this face now the area of this face by the dimension would be length times width and of course the area of this face will also be length times width and there are two of them so what we're actually going to have is two times length times width all right let us look at the green section the green section comprises of the dimension width and height all right and there are two of them this one and this one and they are of equal area so we're gonna have width times height times two so you have two width times height plus we can look at the red section here you can see that the dimension here is length and height and of course there are two red sections here and here so we have two times the length times the height and of course this gives me the formula for the total surface area of a cuboid so it's two times length times width plus two times width times height plus two times length times height 
this is the total surface area of a cuboid. Now, here's a typical question that you could be asked. You're given a cuboid, you're given the dimensions of the cuboid, and you're asked to find the total surface area of the figure above, which we know is a cuboid. Now, we can go about this by using the formula that says that the total surface area is equal to 2 length times width plus 2 length times height plus 2 width times height and of course addition is commutative so it doesn't even matter which one i write first i could write two length times height first then two width times height then two length times width i would actually get the same thing however i need to identify which one i'm using as length with our height and length with and height are just names so let me go probably we could call this the width we could call this the length and we could call this the height so this is going to become two times my length which i did label as eight multiplied by my which which is three plus two times my length again which is eight multiplied by my height which is four plus two times my width which is three multiplied by my height which is four and of course we can put all this inside of our calculators this is going to give me 136 square centimeters all right and you leave off the unit of course the answer is incorrect however you don't have to memorize the formula you can simply look at the figure and say that, all right the front and the back is the same and of course it, we give this dimension probably the height and the length the two sides are the same all right which in this case it's the width and the height so it would be two times that and then if you look at the top and the bottom here so if this is l down here up here would also be L, and if that, if, if that is width down here, up here so would also be width, because for a rectangle, the opposite sides are equal. So we could actually visualize it and work it out instead of using the formula or trying to swap the formula. We can just look at the figure, visualize it, and work out what the total surface area is going to be. All right? So there are two approaches that you can take. Memorize the formula or just visualize it and work it out, whichever way you find easier. It's up to you.